we are going to configure the table widget to allow users to edit data directly in the table. So the first thing we want to do is have our hosted feature service in ArcGIS Online enabled for editing. So the way you do that is from the overview tab that we're used to seeing for our hosted feature services, we'll go over, we'll click the settings button, and then we'll, we will scroll down to the feature layer section. As you can see, my hosted feature service is already enabled for editing. The thing you want to also be aware of is that you can also keep track of who edited the data. If you're allowing changes to geometry, if you're allowing your users to add and delete features or update features, then you can also keep track of those. When you select these, the fields will automatically be added to your attribute table by ArcGIS Online. If you come down here, you'll see what kind of editing is allowed. You'll only see these options after you've enabled editing. So for the purposes of this tutorial, we only want to allow updates to attributes. We don't want our users to be able to add, delete, or update geometry. We only want them to be able to update the data within the attribute table. So I'll make sure this is saved. And once that's saved, I'll go back over to my Experience Builder. And from Experience Builder, I've already configured a map to interact with this tutorial. So you'll see in this map, it is a layer of the US state boundaries. And the different colors are gray for areas that geospatial training services has not been to yet for training in 2023. And purple is where we have been. But this map hasn't been updated yet because there are quite a few more states that we've been to this year for training. So that is how I am going to run this tutorial. So the first thing we want to do is click on the insert widget button up in the upper right hand corner, which brings up the widgets panel. When I scroll down under data centric, I'll find the table widget. I'll pull that table widget over. And as soon as I place the table widget, the table configuration panel appears on the right hand side. From here, I'm going to click on new sheet and then I'll click to select my data. So these are different maps that have been connected to this experience builder. And the one here that says where we've been and where we're going, this map is the one connected to this map widget. So I'm going to expand this to see the layers that are, that are a part of that map. And then I'm going to select the state boundaries layer within that map. And as you can see, the table has been populated with the information from that attribute table from this hosted feature service. And then the sheet configuration pane opened. So for me, the first thing I like to do is make sure that I make my, my layout as meaningful as possible for my users, which includes titles and reference text. So I'm going to change state boundaries to in-person training. Once I click out of this field, you'll see that the tab for that table has changed its name. Now, I could also add more sheets to this table widget. And if I were to do that, I'm going to go ahead and just show you real quick what that'll look like. Then you can see that um, it either will show the different tables as tabs across the top, or I could choose a drop down arrangement style where my users will be able to click on the drop down and choose between the different tables. I myself prefer tabbed layouts, uh, but also for this tutorial, we are only going to be working with one sheet. So I am going to get rid of that sheet and then pull back up this sheet configuration for the in-person training by clicking directly on the sheet from my table configuration pane. The next thing I want to configure are the visible fields. So to help streamline your user's interaction with tables, you should get rid of any unnecessary fields that they don't need to see to help them more quickly get to the fields that they need to see and edit. So I'm going to click the drop down, and then I am going to take out the state FIPS, the population, population density, square miles, and I am going to turn on the in-person field, which is a field that has values of yes or no, the yes meaning we've been to that state for training this year and no meaning we haven't. So I'm also going to leave on the state abbreviation and the state name because those are clarifying 
data elements that will help somebody quickly get to the record that they want to edit. So once I again click this, that drop down menu will go away. And you can see that the three fields that I have for display are listed here. Now, because I have editing enabled on my hosted feature service, there is this allow editing option. You would not see this option if you don't have editing enabled yet. So that's something that you can kind of help you check to make sure you have the appropriate settings. If you're not seeing this, you need to go back to the settings for your hosted feature service and make sure that you've enabled that editing. So I'm going to click to allow editing in the table widget. When I check that box, you'll see that this list of visible fields has changed a little bit. Now it has boxes next to each field. What that is, is it is allowing me to select the fields I want my users to be able to edit. So I have select the in-person field, but I'm leaving state abbreviation and state name unchecked because I do not want my users to edit those fields. The next thing I like to do is change the background color of the headings in my table. This just kind of helps differentiate between the heading and the records with the data for your users. So it just makes it that much more streamlined when your users are trying to figure out and find the data and information they want to find. So I'm going to click on this and just choose a, a light red for now. Oops, and sometimes when you click out of that sheet configuration pane, the way that you will bring it back up is click on your sheet right here and it'll come back up. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable search. So when I enable search, I have to select this, the fields that I want my users to be able to search by. I am going to choose state abbreviation and state name. And I'm not sure if you noticed that, so I'm going to take those back off. Right here in the builder's canvas, this is where the search bar will appear. I have enabled it, but we don't yet see it. And that is because we don't yet have a field connected to that search. So I am going to click on state abbreviation. You can see that that search bar has come up now. And then I'm also going to select state name so that they can search by both. And then I'm going to change the hint to search state name. And when I scroll down, select records is already enabled. What that means is my users are going to be able to click manually on records in the table to select them. I am going to change the select mode from single to multiple, which means that the users will be able to select multiple fields within that table. And then I'm going to leave refresh uh, enabled by default. What that means is the users will be able to refresh that table as necessary. So for now, I'm going to leave the sheet configuration as it is, and I'm going to save so I don't lose any of that work I just did. One of the things that I want my want to happen when my users are interacting with this application is when they click on a record in the table, I want that state to be selected and zoomed to within the map widget. So to do that, as I'm selected on my table widget, so I still have my table configuration panel up on the right, I'm going to click on action, and then I'm going to add a trigger. And my trigger is going to say that when a record selection changes. So that means when a record selection changes in my table, I would like to have an action on a target, which is the map. So I am going to choose map as my target, and I am going to choose zoom to as my action. I like to change this to custom and leave this at 5,000. Uh, you can leave it at automatic and see what it looks like and then decide whether or not you want to change that extent for the zoom level, but this usually works for me. So I'm going to save that trigger. The other thing I want to do is add, add, the, add another action on the map that says when a record selection changes that the map filters by the state boundary. So the trigger data is already the state boundary because the state boundary is what I'm selecting in my table. My action data is also going to be that same state boundary layer from this map. So I am going to select the data from the map and select the state boundaries. You'll see that the condition is already auto bound and that's because the trigger in action is acting on the exact same data set if these were different data sets, then I would have to have a field 
that I could relate a unique ID to. So if this was a different state boundaries field, then I would have to say the state name in this data set is equal to the state name in this data set. And then I could configure the same interaction, but it's much simpler when you are acting on the same data set within the two different widgets. That's why it auto binds. I'm going to save this action. And then the last thing I want to configure is I want to give my users flexibility in selecting records in this table. So they could also come over here to the map and select a state from the map and then have the table filter down to that record and select it. So to do this, I need to click on the map widget. So now the map configuration panel opened on the right. And I had to take out something I had configured earlier real quick. So now I want to add a trigger. And I want to say when the record selection changes, which means my user has selected a state within the map, that I want my target to be the framework. Now, what that means is that the framework of a data set is when that data set is configured within multiple widgets, this action will act on all of those widgets that that data set is configured within. Now, I hope that makes sense. So when I say framework and then I say filter data records, um, I have to configure a trigger data set. The trigger data set is from my map. It's the state boundaries. So I'm going to select that. And my action data for this filtering is I want to filter the state boundaries in the table based on what was selected in my map. So I will go ahead and select the same boundaries. And just like before, this is auto bound because it is the same layer. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to preview my application. So when I preview my application, this is what you, your users will see. And it is always very important to go and test out the configurations for understanding how your users will interact and maybe something that you've configured isn't actually doing exactly what you wanted it to do. So then you might have to go back and make some changes. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to search for the state of Idaho because I need to add Idaho to the list of states that geospatial training services has been to this year. The drop down shows Idaho, so I'm going to select it. And as you can see, the record filtered in the table and the state filtered within the map. So now if I simply click on it to select it in the table, my map will zoom in to that state and it zoomed pretty far because I have the extent set to um, 5000. So I just zoomed out there a little bit. Uh, so when I clicked on the record, it did zoom to it like I needed it to. Now I'm going to double click into this in person field. This is the one that we said could be edited. I'm going to double click and I'm going to change this to yes. As you can see, it is immediately updated in the hosted feature service and the color changed from gray to purple and purple means that we've been there. So there's nothing else I have to do for that change. I don't have to click save anywhere else. There's nothing else I need to do. And to show that I am going to actually refresh my browser so that you can see that the change was maintained and there's nothing else that I needed to do. So the next thing I'm going to do is click on Oregon because Oregon is also a state that we've been to this year. So when I click on it in the map, you see that it selects in the map and it filters down over in my table. So now when I double click into this field and then I say yes, that changes to purple. So um, this is something that is in high demand. The, the ability to able directly from an attribute table is in high demand, mostly because it's a lot of times users just need to be able to modify and update and maintain data that is already existing and they don't need to always be creating new data. If your users do need to create new data, create new features, then the edit widget would need to be involved because there is not a way for users to create new records from the attribute table widget itself. 
So we hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you've enjoyed the tutorial, please click like below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for content updates.